Hello world and welcome back to Source Decoded. Now that we've got kind of a high level overview of what the internet and the World Wide Web are all about, I think it's time we start to get more specific, more in depth about how web applications and web pages work. Now for this video, I'm going to be using the words web application and web page pretty interchangeably. There is a difference between the two, but for our purposes today, uh, they don't really matter. So we'll get to that later. A web application is like an enormous clock. It only works if all the little cogs mesh together. The pieces of a web app are made out of three main materials. There's HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. There are a lot of other things that go into a web page like images, video, audio, and stuff like that. But HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are the languages that the browser understands that we use to put the whole thing together. Now, JavaScript gets a lot of attention, and we've done quite a few videos about JavaScript on this channel. It's a, a programming language, a full-featured programming language, and it's the thing that we use to make the application actually tick, to make it do things, respond to events, and go get information from servers and things like that. CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets, are, as the name would imply, all about style. We use CSS to define how the elements in our app actually look how big they are, what their placement is, what color they are, even the color, style, size of text, and things like that. But the most important piece of this dynamic and stylish trio is HTML, which is the skeleton, the composer, that, the glue that brings everything together. In fact, when you point your browser at a website, the first thing the browser does is download an HTML file. And that HTML file has instructions about where to go to get all of the other pieces, the, H, the JavaScript and the CSS images and everything else. So we'll be starting with HTML. And I think it'd be good for us to have a project that we can build on as we explore HTML, JavaScript, and CSS and go forward. So I'm going to start a new project today that we'll use in, in future videos. And my idea is to make a little web page that we can use to collect the stuff we're learning. So I'm going to make a new folder here on my computer and the super creative name that I've come up with for this project is Brainbox. So open that folder and then I'm going to open the folder in Visual Studio Code which is my uh, editor of choice these days and right now the folder is empty. I'll go ahead and add a file and call it index html and get that out of the way it's important to understand that an html file is just a text file you can edit this in any program that edits text files like uh, notepad on windows notepad plus plus is a popular program you can do it with text edit that comes built into a mac but you have to be careful because text edit actually saves files by default as rich text files so just be careful there but the program you use to edit these can be really anything. There's nothing special about the file format of these. It's just a text file that has .html on the end. A text file is made up of HTML tags, which are tag names wrapped inside of angle brackets, and we saw some of those in the previous video. But the first thing that goes into our HTML file is not actually going to be a tag. It will be a doc type declaration. So I'll go ahead and add that. It looks like a tag because it's got angle brackets but it's really just information for the browser so that it knows how to interpret the HTML that'll come later. There are lots of different versions of HTML and if you're new to HTML count yourself lucky because back in the day these doc type declarations were terrible and you couldn't memorize them you had to go look them up somewhere in order to get a valid one. This doc type, this very simple and beautiful doc type is the doc type for HTML5. It just tells the browser that the file that we're looking at is an HTML5 document, so expect those kinds of tags. Every HTML file starts with a tag, that's the HTML tag. An HTML document is kind of a tree structure, and a computer nerd would say that the HTML element is at the root of the tree. Even though if you were to draw it on a whiteboard, the root would actually look more like a trunk 
with everything coming off of it, but we'll stick with the nerd speak and call this the root. HTML element doesn't really do much except be the root of the tree. And it, uh, I think all the time, has exactly two children. One is the head and the other is the body. The head element doesn't render anything on the page. It's there to contain information about the page that we're making. We can link to other resources and add scripts and things up here. The only tag we'll deal with today, though, is the title tag. And I'll give this the title of, not bitbox, brainbox. And this is what will appear in the tab on the browser as the title of the page. This also appears in search results as the name of the search results. So getting the title right is, is kind of important to have there. That's all we'll do in the head for now. Let's move down to the body. And I am going to fill in the body of this HTML file with a bunch of really interesting content. And there we go. I've written a bunch of HTML. Let's go through this file real quick and um, see what we've got here. So the first level heading is the title of the whole page. I've called it brain box. Um, these section tags don't actually render anything on the finished page, uh, but I'm using them for semantic purposes. Uh, or in other words, I'm using them to organize the stuff that's in the file. The browser might not care in terms of how it renders that these are sections, but we are going to care as we start to build out this application. Okay, so I have, I think, four sections here, and uh, each section has a level two heading and a paragraph and some other things that we'll talk about in a little bit. Let's go ahead and look at this file in a browser in Chrome to see how it will render. This is our file in Chrome and it's, it's pretty much what we would expect. Now I'm gonna introduce you to the dev tools. Uh, any of the major browsers has these. If you're using Safari on a Mac, you have to enable developer mode, I think, in order to find these. And I'll let Google explain to you how to do that, because if I explained it now, I would be wrong in a couple of months when they change it. So if you're on Safari on a Mac, go Google enable developer mode in Safari. So to get to the developer tools, pretty much all we need to do is right click on something and say inspect, and that'll pop open a pane somewhere. Let's zoom in. Come on. That will pop open a pane uh, with some really nifty tools. Now remember I said that the HTML file is, or an HTML document is like a tree. Using the element inspector here, we can see that tree, HTML, here at the root with two children. Head has a child title. Actually, you can edit things in here and see the change. You see the title and the tab there changed. I'm going to reload to put that back. Anything you do here, for the most part, is non-destructive. If you change stuff in the developer tools, unless you do some extra setup, it doesn't actually change the file that you're working on. Although it is fun to open this up on like Yahoo and pretend to your friends that you're a super mega hacker and you're just going here deleting stuff right off of Yahoo's page before their eyes. It's pretty amazing. You can see here in the body we've got the four sections I talked about and as I move over them they highlight. Now I want to make, I want to be real pedantic here for a second and make a point. There is a difference between an HTML file and an HTML document. The HTML file is what you make in your text editor, but the browser reads that in and turns it into a document, which is a totally fake and made up uh, data structure that the browser uses to render a page. We're gonna talk a little bit later about the document object model and what that means when we're interacting with a page in JavaScript. Just know that when you write an HTML file, what you're doing is giving the, the browser instructions on how to create an HTML document. So what, what is represented here is an HTML document and you'll see sometimes that uh, the spacing that you used in your source file is not preserved and like the doc type declaration here, I wrote doc type in all caps but it's gone in lowercase that. 
That's because this isn't a text file we're looking at. It's the it's a representation of the actual HTML document. So these dev tools are going to be really important and we'll use them a ton, so I suggest you get really good at finding them and getting into them. Okay, so we've made our first HTML file, we've put it into a browser and seen it turn into an HTML document. And that's basically the gist of, that's, that's most of the most important concepts around HTML combined with the A tags and the linking that we talked about in the last video. But before I end this one, I wanna go over just a few details that if we don't cover them, they'll, they'll, they'll bite you in the future. So I just, I just wanted to cover these. Um, I've written about them here on this page. I'll make this source code available for you to download and use as the basis for your own brain box so that you can keep up with what we're doing and remember the things that we learn. So a couple of these things uh, we've already covered and you know about. What does HTML mean? Um, I just talked about this. An HTML file contains a series of tags written with angle brackets like this. When the browser reads the file, it constructs an HTML document by creating elements directed as directed by the tags. Every HTML tag that you write turns into an HTML element. So file, document, tag, element. Pretty simple. And of course, the HTML document is a tree. Now, if you're typing along, remember I said that an HTML file is just text and there's really nothing special about it. Once in a while, you're going to want to make, say, like a less than sign, just somewhere in your document. Well, that is an important part of how you make an HTML tag, so how do you put a less than sign in the document without confusing the browser that this is just a less than sign and not the beginning of an HTML tag? That is handled by something called HTML entities, and that is explained here. Let me turn on wrapping. Ah, that's better. So if I look at this page in the browser, we see um, there are sequences of characters starting with an ampersand, ending with a semicolon, some character code in the middle like this, amp. The ampersand is an important character to HTML, so it's technically not allowed to just drop an ampersand into your code so, so that you have an ampersand character. If you want to make one of these, uh, you have to write it like this. Amp, ampersand, amp, semicolon. Um, this is confusing and it's ugly and I know it's really hard to read, uh, but, but this is important. If I wanted to make a less than sign, I'm going to make a new paragraph here and say a less than sign is made like this. Ampersand, LT, semicolon. So you notice I wrote that. If I save this and go back to our browser and refresh, it shows up like that. I just wanted you to know about them now in case you are typing along, you put an ampersand in and then half your document disappears and you don't know why. Um, and again, you can Google HTML entities for a bunch of handy reference charts and lookups and cheat sheets and things. That is basically what I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this series, and if you have questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll try to answer them in a future video. Thanks again for watching. You'll see me in the next video. Bye.